Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, we'll start in a couple of minutes. Uh, hopefully, we can have more folks join us, and then we can get started. Good afternoon again, everyone. I think we can get started now. Uh, hopefully more folks will join us as we proceed. Um, thank you for making the time to connect with us today. Welcome to the 2023 Youth and Parent Information Session. It's great to have everyone here today. My name is Adiola Ibekozian. I'm the Deputy Director of the Office of Youth Employment and Opportunity. I'll have my colleagues, uh, Neyman and Alicia, introduce themselves. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Naomi McDaniels. I am the manager here for employment and payroll with YEO and look forward to sharing some um, information with you all today. Hi, everyone. My name is Alicia Fleming. I'm a manager of outreach and engagement at the Office of Youth Employment and Opportunity, and I'm looking forward to sharing with you all today um, about the successful program. Thank you, Naomi. Thank you, Alicia. Um, just so you're all aware, the session is being recorded, um, just for your awareness, um, we're recording the session today, and hopefully we'll be able to cover all the slides uh, within the time frame that we have. Um, Neyman and Alicia will be facilitating the session with me. We have a packed agenda, so we can get started, Alicia. Um, so we're going to just go over really briefly, uh, a brief overview of the 2023 Summer Jobs Plan as well as the positive impact of summer employment on youth. We'll also discuss the success link youth jobs in detail, and you hear from some of our youth jobs intermediaries and the amazing opportunities that they have lined up this year for Boston's youth. Um, we'll conclude the session with questions from everyone. So please feel free to add your questions in the Q&A section as the session unfolds. Next slide, please. Under Mayor Misha Wu's guidance and direction, our office is leading this really important effort to convene some of the larger youth jobs providers like ABCD, Boston Peak, Access for Humanity, MLK Scholars, YOU and YMC of Greater Boston to really just create a good job, uh, summer jobs experience for all Boston's youth ages 14 to 18. 
so they can be employed, paid and engaged, and so they can get the opportunities to also learn soft skills, um, starting June 26 up to August 25 of this year. Next slide. So one of the very, really important things uh, for us at the city is to um, ensure that we're seeing the impact of these jobs on Boston's youth. Um, I think for a lot of families, the income might be a primary factor as to why they want to get access to jobs. But there are other things in play here that will be worth considering for families for you to just be able to make the decision that you want your youth or your child to work this summer. And um, one of the things that we've seen in a research uh, partnership with Northeastern University is that working during the summer helps just really raise their academic achievements through aspirations, and it also helps improve their behavioral outcomes through community engagement. So these are some of the youth outcomes we've been seeing over the years and would encourage parents to just consider this and, and use it as a push for their youth to be involved in summer jobs this year. Next slide. So we've been able to identify and partner with organizations who can provide early career exploration within these industries, uh, arts and entertainment, education and childcare, in public administration, sports and recreation, in human service or, or the nonprofit sector. And it is our hope and belief that um, the youth will be able to develop some really key skills like communication skills, attention to detail, problem solving, and really understanding what it is to work in, a, in an environment where they are professionals and get a full understanding of a workplace a culture overall. Also develop skills around time management and executive functions. And all of this skill building and um, just youth keeping themselves will lead to them being engaged. It will help them get more hands-on experience in a work environment and hopefully also lead to them getting better youth, um, better future um, employment opportunities. Now I hand it off to Alicia to introduce our youth jobs intermediaries. Awesome, thanks so much Adiola. Um, so yes, I'm here to introduce the uh, youth jobs intermediaries that we'll be presenting today and sharing a bit more about their organizations and the opportunities that are available throughout the city uh, for Boston youth. Um, so we have with us today presenting Artists for Humanity, John Hancock, MLK Scholars, the Higher Education Consortium, ABCD Summerworks, Boston Private Industry Council, YMCA of Greater Boston, and Youth Options Unlimited. So uh, to start us off, I will pass the mic over to our, our friend at Ars for Humanity. Uh, I'll invite Jennifer De Los Santos uh, to the stage. Hi, everyone. Thank you. Next slide. So as you all heard, um, my name is Jennifer De Los Santos. I'm the recruiting coordinator at Artists for Humanity um, and also an alumni from the program myself. Um, and I was in one of their studios called The Painting Studio. And I'll just be answering the questions about who we are, what we have to offer, and how to stay in contact if you're interested in our open position. So next slide. So we believe that um, through paid employment, um, teens can lead social equity, the change to social equity through art and design, partnering with um, our communities or businesses in our communities. So next slide. So um, just to expand on what that looks like, um, that looks like creating different kinds of artwork for different businesses or your own creative voice. And so that's where we get the art studio positions. But before I get to that, some of our criteria um, in order to be eligible for our job, you have to be between the ages 14 to 18, a Boston resident, and be able to work Monday through Thursday from 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. And our program starts um, July 10th to August 24th. So some of the positions that we have to offer is 3D design studio. So um, that is creating furniture. We do have a couple bike racks um, across Boston um, and just different 3D models, um, video production, printmaking, 
photography, painting, creative technology, which we have to offer is animation and coding. So the last project that our team worked on was creating video games um, and then graphic design, which is like logos and campaigns, um, shoe and clothing designs. Um, and then for the first summer ever, for anyone who's interested in office positions or administration work, um, we do have a couple slots open, which is our recruiting summer assistant, which would be helping me. Um, and then our art exhibition summer assistant, um, which would be curating gallery spaces um, and, and hanging up artwork. Um, arts program, so running the program, special events, we have a gallery space where we rent out. So just um, helping with that team and an art fellowship um, assistant as well. So next slide. And then if any of that interests you and you want to learn more, um, you can go to afhboston.org and under that team jobs. Um, and if you're ready to apply um, and you can scan the QR code. Um, and also we offer all teams to come into our open house just to see if Artists for Humanity is the right choice for them. And so our next open house is May 23rd at 4 p.m. And you can come see all of the studios that we have to offer live. Um, and then if you can't make that one, we have other future dates as well. Um, but yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, next, we will invite uh, John Hancock MLK Scholars to speak. And speaking for us today is Annie Duong Turner. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Annie Duong Turner, and I'm the Director of Community Investments for the US at John Hancock. Uh, so, our MLK Scholars program is a, a little bit different. Um, it, it's a, it went up for our signature initiatives for our community where we reinforce our, our investment in young people. And it's aligned to our global impact agenda. And we, we're running it to drive inclusive economic opportunity by building Boston's future civic and business leaders, financial capability, networks, and skills. Uh, and we do this by offering grants to nonprofit partner organizations or community-based organizations to fund summer jobs for Boston youth at their sites. And we also offer digital financial literacy um, uh, content that scholars uh, work on during the summer. And we've also made this content available to other to the other summer jobs programs um, in the city. Uh, this program is uh, actually going to be our, our 16th year uh, that we're going into. Uh, and since two, uh, 2018, sorry, 2008, we've invested over $15 million uh, to reach over 6,000 Boston youth. And next slide, please. John Hancock doesn't really hire or place young people at a work site uh, because we do this by offering grants to nonprofit organizations. Uh, we're asking our nonprofits to recruit and commit to hiring scholars directly based on a few eligibility criteria. First off, uh, we're asking for scholars to have demonstrated leadership potential. Uh, this could mean that the scholar has worked at the nonprofit before, and this may be uh, them coming back for an elevated position within the, the nonprofit, or they're really into volunteering and giving back into their community. So demonstrated leadership potential in, in that regards. Uh, they have to be a full-time resident of the city of Boston. And scholars also um, should be within the, our preferred target age range uh, between 16 to 18. Um, and we're also asking nonprofits to, to hire scholars who aren't already being funded through SuccessLink, AFH, Boston Pick, or ABCD, or, or any of the, uh, the, uh, the other um, programs that you'll hear about in this call. Uh, and the reason why is because uh, we want to avoid a situation where, where scholars are, uh, where a young person's all of a sudden working 20, um, 50 hours a week because that's just not healthy. Uh, for a young person. Um, and a lot of our nonprofits are still in the recruitment cycle right now, um, and they should be recruiting through mid-June. Uh, our program kicks off during the summer in between uh, late June uh, all the way through end of August. The, the dates for the program really depend on the work site that the scholars are, are working 
working at each um, are, are, are working at. Um, and scholars would be working for um, up to 25 hours a week uh, between six to seven weeks during the summer. Uh, during their time there, uh, we're also expecting scholars to participate in personal and professional development at their work sites. Uh, when, when we make decisions around which work sites to work to partner with uh, for MLK scholars, we, we also assess whether they're providing like um, further development opportunities beyond just having a young person work at their, their work site, although that is super valuable. And of course, they're, they're also completing online uh, financial literacy and mental wellness content to better understand like the basics of, you know, as you're getting your paychecks, like, what you should be thinking about um, in, in terms of financial planning for yourselves. All right, in the next slide, please. So John, uh, John Hancock's website has more information about our program. Um, it, and uh, like, I'm happy to follow up with a direct link to our, to our website, but if you just Google John Hancock MLK Scholars Program, you'll be able to find our page pretty easily. Uh, on, on our website, there is a list of our 2023 nonprofit partners and links to their direct websites. Uh, this year, we're excited to work with about 30 nonprofit sites. Uh, and there's also a program directory on our website with more information about like who did actually who the people are um, that you should reach out to at the organization who actually run the, the programs. Um, some more information about the roles and responsibilities um, and, and the organization itself for, for you to consider if you're thinking about working there. Um, and, and we have a huge a, like variety of different roles um, in our portfolio this year. Uh, some of them might be office type roles. Uh, some of them might be sort of hands-on working outdoors type roles. Um, there might also be some camp, junior camp counselor roles. Uh, there's a, a huge, huge range. Um, so I would highly encourage anyone who's interested in working with MLK scholars uh, to check out our website and the program directory some, for more information. And next slide. So, it, But if you do have further questions, where we are pretty accessible, you can reach out to us at mlkscholars at jhancock.com. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and I will also share that I do see a couple of questions in the Q&A. We just again, again continue to ask that all of our attendees today continue to ask questions in the Q&A uh, feature of the uh, Zoom webinar. Um, by doing this will allow us to make sure that we address your questions at the Q&A portion at the end of the session. So again, just to reiterate, please do continue to ask questions in the Q&A box and we will get to those questions at the end of the session. Um, next, we will also uh, invite to the stage uh, our representative from the Higher Education Consortium, uh, that is Lynn Sanders, who will be speaking on behalf of the opportunities available at the Higher Education Consortium. Hi, everybody. Um, this is Lynn Sanders. Um, I have do you, sorry, do you all have, okay, cool. <laughs> uh, uh, I am uh, I am from Northeastern U University. And as um, said, I am here to represent the Higher Education Consortium as a group of um, four-year universities who are expanding opportunities for young people this summer um, in the summer jobs program uh, as a part of Mayor Wu's initiative to be able to offer more jobs. As was noted earlier, Northeastern has been a longtime partner in this work um, for um, as a, on the research side, working with SuccessLink to do a lot of research to, to show some of the great outcomes that um, summer jobs have. And uh, given that existing relationship, we really wanted to expand on that and, um, you know, kind of, I would say, put our put 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 our, put their money where their mouth is, and um, be actual uh, employers of of young people this summer. Um, if you go to the next slide. That would be great. Um, so, as as mentioned earlier, you know, from the research that um, we uh, at Northeastern have done, you know, this these summer jobs provide a great meaningful opportunity for youth to engage in job experiences and um, lead to really improved outcomes and uh on we know that the higher education sector around in and around boston is 
huge and a huge employer. So we really um, thought it was incumbent upon us to, to take more part in this and to, to, you know, give youth job experiences on a college campus, um, helping to raise academic aspirations and provide pathways into higher education, really um, giving them the, the full experience of being on a college campus, as well as gaining those employment skills. Um, and, you know, the, as, as noted, our research evidence has, has shown that summer jobs are really um, important and help to improve the likelihood of graduation and boost for your college enrollment. And this, we hope, will be um, building further on that. You could next slide. Um, so yeah, as mentioned, that this this the the mayor really pu pushed for us to expand this this year, and we were happy to to take part. So there are um, several partnerships with different universities um, that allow for youth career exploration. Um, some of which are um, jobs on campus, like other summer jobs. Uh, these youth will be doing a variety of tasks, working with. Uh, staff at the university, uh, you know, from facilities, dining, admissions, housing, athletics. Um, we have a lot of some positions doing kind of communications things, um, you know, really giving a, a broad range of experiences uh, make, made available to youth. Um, or there are also opportunities for youth to participate in programs like at Northeastern, we have Bridge to Calculus, which offers uh, is a ca calculus preparation course or other kind of, there are other programs out there and that are curriculum and are less like a traditional job, um, but the youth can participate in these programs and um, learn and during the summer and also be earning money for their time while they're learning um, at no, no cost. Um, or in some cases, there's a combination of these two kinds of activities. Uh, next slide. Um, and so, as I mentioned, I am from Northeastern. Um, we are um, hiring young people ages uh, 14 to 18 in a variety of positions across campus, and um, as well as hiring youth leaders between the ages of 19 to 24 and really want to put a plug for that because we really would love to get some uh, of those. We have a, a lot more applicants for in the younger age group. Um, and we also have the uh, Bridge to Calculus program, which is intended uh, for uh, rising uh, juniors and seniors um, to be really prepared um, to take part in calculus and is also um, in partnership with Boston Public Schools. It's a program that's been long standing at Northeastern, but this year for the first time it's being offered as a paid opportunity so youth can, um, you know, be spending that time and also earning money and not have to like think about it, maybe get another, be doing a program like this and then also get a different summer job. Uh, Tufts University is also participating with employment opportunities for youth ages 15 to 18, as well as um, same, similar to Northeastern summer leaders for between 19 and 24. And um, there are other jobs available at universities through um, the private industry council. So Northeastern and Tufts as noted here are um, participating through SuccessLink and, and youth can um, find our um, job listings on the SuccessLink jobs page. Um, whereas uh, for Boston College and UMass Boston have opportunities available through the Boston Private Ind Industry Council. So you can um, go to their website to learn more about those opportunities. And thanks very much. Thank you. Next, we'll invite uh, Ryan Brennan from ABCD SummerWorks. Hi, everyone. Uh, thanks for having me here today. I appreciate you all being here. Um, so I am Ryan Brennan. I am from ABCD, Action for Boston Community Development. And we'll be talking about the SummerWorks program today as uh, we're partnering up this summer. Um, so for most of the presentation here, I'm actually going to go through how to do the application and show some slides that will allow you to see the application process, where um, what it looks like, make it a little bit streamlined and easier for you um, to complete. 
but our summer works program as a whole has 130 to 240 hours of paid internships that will be starting over the summer. The hours vary a little bit based off of age and based off of the job opportunities that we do have this year. The youth will be paid again on a different raised scale based off of their age from 15 to $17 an hour. Um, we'll be paying a little bit higher wages for the older youth, um, hoping that we're gonna be getting them a little bit more of an intensive um, type of internship uh, versus our younger 14 to 15 year olds. The program itself is going to be starting June 26th and will be ending August 25th, barring any sort of new funding that might come out towards the end of the summer. We do sometimes extend ourselves. One of the things uh, with our summer works program is that we do 15 hours of workshops. These workshops are going to go over soft skills development. So talking about your communications, work readiness, um, being prepared for uh, being at work, how to schedule your time, um, how to do resumes, how to do mock interviews and, and get yourself prepared for interviews later down the road. So it's a really good workshop that you'll get to do um, together with a group. And um, it's a fun experience if you actually buy in and enjoy being in a classroom setting. Um, it's definitely going to be really hands on during that time. Uh, we work with over 100 organizations, uh, partner organizations in the city of Boston and uh, those partner organizations, uh, some of them are listed here. We have 14 different neighborhood locations uh, with ABCD as well as our Head Start programs, um, which is the ECE or Early Childhood Education and teacher assistant jobs at daycares. We also work with uh, Daily Table, Freedom House, Mothers for Justice and Equality, uh, United South End Settlements, um, and we have 27 referral partners that are working with SuccessLink that are going to choose participants through different interviews um, that will get paid then through ABCD. And uh, next slide. And so how do we apply? So um, ABCD's criteria, I think if you hit one more, my, yep, there we go. Um, so in order to qualify for this, um, you do have to be a Boston or Medford resident. Um, currently right now, we're holding off on Medford because we're trying to focus on Boston. However, we might have um, some spots. So we are encouraging people, they'd still uh, live in the Medford area to, to give it a try just in case um, we end up expanding it again. Um, you do have to be between the ages of 14 to 21. We do have some flexibility potentially for uh, 22 to 24 year olds as well, but very limited spots this summer for that. So in order to actually complete your application, what you need to do is you need to go to summerworks.net. It is what the page is here on your right side of your screen. And you're going to register if you've never done ABCD before by clicking the register button. Or if you already have an account, you can log in with your old email and password and sign in at the bottom. A lot of what happens um, if you have had an account before, but no chance you've remembered the password, you can just click on your there on the bottom and it'll help prompt you um, to, to be able to reset and get access to your old account. Next slide. And once you have created an account, it will send you an email. That email will, um, will have a link in it, will provide you the actual online application. And this is what the online application itself looks like here. So there are three major tabs that you're going to be completing information in. It's going to be your applicant info, applicant details, which is going to be a little bit more direct about yourself, and then family info. Now for us, we do off, um, we do take all families um, info. So everybody that lives in the household, um, no matter how old they are, uh, we do add them to the application itself. Uh, we do have forms for those that might not want to have um, total access on here, and they'd rather just real briefly just mention um, the household size. Uh, we do have an, an attestation form that, that we can um, send over to you for you to complete. But the easiest way to do it is to just complete it on the application itself by clicking the add family member. Um, we do not need you to add the social into that part for other family members. Um, it does have it listed there, but it's not a required field. So don't worry about making sure to find that. Uh, but it is important to make sure that you um, complete all of the other uh, check marks down at the bottom. It'll be the part um, of the process for us to be able to figure out what documents we need to collect from. That brings us to the next part. And that is going to be what are we accepting? What do we need to make sure um, that you're eligible for the program? So first thing is once you've completed the application, it'll prompt you to a page where you can print out your application. Uh, the application itself will print out with uh, three pages. It'll be the application where you can, you and a parent or guardian, if you're under the age of 18 can sign. And then the third page is a Corey release form. And this is just a formality to make sure that we um, understand uh, criminal background so that we can make sure that we place two at proper sites um, that are accepting of that. 
The documents itself that we are going to be collecting is a proof of age or ID. One of the big things um, for this to have a, as a proof of ID, um, if you don't have one and you're, under the, you're a little younger, we can use a report card. So um, I would recommend printing out, you know, the most recent report card, and you can add that in for the proof of ID. Uh, for age, um, birth certificates are usually the easiest things, but again, if you do have a mass ID, uh, we can use that as well. Uh, for proof of residency, easiest thing is usually just to take a, a bill, most recent that was to the house. It doesn't have to have the applicant's name on it. It can have anybody that's listed in the household, and it just needs to be dated within the last um, three to four months for us. So anything that has the date, your name, and the address that you live at, we can use for that. Proof of household membership. All we need to collect for this, um, easiest thing usually is a health insurance card. We can also use IDs um, or birth certificates. Um, so any of those are gonna be easy. And then also for proof of income. So that's uh, back to where that family uh, page was when you're adding that info in. What you're going to do is, is tell us what type of income. So that will be what it is that we're looking for. So if you're working jobs and wages, we would just take a most recent pay stub. If you happen to um, own your own business, we'll take a schedule C from your taxes, um, but it will give you a more detailed list when you print out your app application. So it will be one of the pages that will have a little bit more detail about um, all the different things that we do accept. Uh, next slide. One of the real important things when completing an application with us is just making sure that you're checking the email that you've used for the account. Uh, we will be sending follow up emails, letting you know the status of your application pretty regularly, uh, letting you know if there's anything missing or if maybe one of the forms that you uploaded um, was too hard to see or we couldn't read it. So it's definitely important to make sure that you're following up specifically um, with your email. Also, for any kind of help, please feel free to reach out to us um, via the phone at 617-348-6548, or you can email us at youth at bostonabcd.org. Um, that email itself goes to about four different people in the office, so we always make sure that we're on top of that and we'll be able to get back to you pretty readily. And uh, that's it. Thank you. Hi, Alicia. Um, hi, everyone. Sorry to cut you here, but um, Boston Peak will not be joining us today, so you can please move on to the next slide. And um, apologies to folks here. who are hoping to hear from them. Thank you, Alicia. Awesome. Thank you so much. Um, so thank you to uh, Ryan, who just shared a bit about the uh, opportunities available at ABC ABCD SummerWorks. Um, next, we'll have uh, Jessica Colon from YMC of Greater Boston to share a little bit more about what is available um, at this uh, organization. Good evening, all. Thank you so much for having us. Uh, to start, we want to first introduce ourselves and our team. So my name is James Anderton. I'm the Director of Operations for Teen Development here at the Y, and I oversee the Achievers Program and our Eggleston facility. My name is Cassandra Strange, and I am one of the regional team directors, and I support the Roxbury, High Park, and Dorchester and Parkway branches. Hey, and um, I'm Wendy Jamshree. Uh, I use she, her pronouns. I'm also one of the other regional team directors supporting the East Boston um, YMCA, Oak Square YMCA in Brighton and the Wang YMCA of Chinatown. So this evening, we'd like to just share with you a little bit about you know, what it's like to apply for the Y. Uh, we wanna share with you all our commitment to youth employment, who is eligible, how to apply, and some of the positions that are available. So with that being said, Cassandra, if you would like to share a little bit about our commitments. So the um, YMCA of Greater Boston, um, we are committed to providing young people paid supervised work opportunities that positively impact their lives uh, through meaning. And we do that through meaningful job placements. We equip future leaders with the necessary skills. Through YMCA positions, young people will feel confident, heard, and valued. They will also learn new skills, gain a network of support, be part of a team, and be prepared for internal and external job placements. Next slide, please. So the areas that we focus on through youth employment, um, we help youth to elevate their voice, um, create meaningful experiences for young people to grow and thrive, 
and to provide quality personal and professional development through workforce, workforce skills, financial literacy, and post-secondary education and career exploration. Some of the um, roles and job placements that we will have during the summer, we have facilities, which is site maintenance, day camp, working with children from four to 10 years of age, early education, which is also working with children, but from the age of birth to five years of age. We have hunger prevention, which is food service. And we have the welcome center, which focuses on customer service. Swim instructor, you must be a strong swimmer. Lifeguards, you must be lifeguard certified. Administrative, um, selection of roles in marketing, fundraising, and general office support. We also have health and wellness, which supports our fitness and wellness department, and health equity, which addresses community health issues. Thanks, Cassandra. So some of the big questions we are asked when we do open our hiring process is who is eligible? So to be eligible for employment, all applicants must meet the following requirements. They must be ages 14 to 18 during the employment period. They must be a full-time resident of the city of Boston, must be legally permitted to work in the United States, and must be able to submit and pass a Corey and Sorry background check. Next slide. So what our application looks like, if you visit our website there, list there, um, and apply, it will bring you through an application process, goes pretty quickly. And then once you are finished, you'll receive notifications and your application will be sent through our screening process. The applications that are passed through will then be receiving an email in which they will be invited to a group interview. After group interviews and we've gone through our deliberations, we will send out an offer letter, which will be received electronically. If the offer letters are accepted, then you will begin to complete our onboarding paperwork, which will be done all electronically. If you would like to apply, you can use your phone or camera to capture the QR image in the bottom left. Thank you. And lastly, we will have for our youth jobs intermediaries, I uh, will have Youth Options Unlimited presenting. I'll now invite uh, Malik Gomez to the stage. Hello, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Malik Gomes. I serve as the Assistant Deputy Director of Youth Career Services here at Youth Options Unlimited Boston. Um, we are a workforce development agency under the Mayor's Office of Workforce Development. And uh, next slide, please. Thank you. So who we serve? We serve youth ages 14 to 24. On average, our young person is typically around the age of 17 years old. We found that 80% of our young people reside in Dorchester, Mattapan, or Roxbury neighborhoods. Roughly 60% are gang involved, have safety issues, or have history of court involvement. So with this understanding, we do prioritize at-risk young people, uh, but we do work with all youth in the city of Boston, as well as BPS. Next slide, please. So here is a breakdown of our program model. So as you can see here, we have TES-1 or a level one, which is pre-placement. And this opportunity is a two-week experience that builds soft skills and preparation for a young person to be prepared for the level two bridge team. Now, in that sense, that bridge team is very project-based in a sense where there are particular cohorts or career cohorts that are identified. At this time, we have a number of cohorts such as barista and customer service. We have culinary arts, creative expression, senior pair leaders, which is a youth-led facilitation group. We have the job search cohort, which focuses on professional development, and uh, of course, the path to securing a private sector opportunity. Um, and in addition to that, we have our level three individual placements, also known as TES3, 
where young people are placed at local businesses, organizations, and they are placed up to a span of six months to build that professional experience. They're subsidized the entire time through IOU Boston. And I'd like to add that this is a year-round program. We do have some offerings that are uh, particularly, uh, particularly identified here today for the summer, um, but a lot of these are also available year-round as well. Next slide, please. So in addition to the Career Services Department, we also offer case management for young people. So the, in, in case management, they've provided a, education support, crisis management, collaboration with referral partners, as well as the creation of individual service plans where goals and benchmarks are identified and created with each client through case management to support them in appro approaching and achieving these goals ultimately. And in regards to collaboration with referral partners, as we mentioned, we do work with some at-risk young people. So referral partners can be done by a self-referral they can be referred through the justice system. They can be referred through a school or a local organization as well. Um, so our pool of young people certainly come from many different areas. Next slide, please. Here's a, a further breakdown uh, and some examples of our pre-placement and bridge teams. So as mentioned, the job readiness is really a key component to TES level one. This summer, youth are automatically placed into TS Level 2's bridge teams, where they receive that same educational and professional development as they would in pre-placement before an extended period of time, in addition to the work that they are doing in the field or on the virtual component. And if I have not mentioned yet, so we do have private programming where some of the programming is in person and some is virtual to accommodate those young people that may have safety concerns or uh, may prefer a virtual opportunity this summer. Next slide, please. So here's further information on our internship or individual placements. Here we have a young, uh, a young group who was uh, placed at a particular Starbucks location. And here was an exploration day as far as uh, just really learning more about the organization. But nonetheless, some of these young people were placed at Starbucks for different opportunities. And ultimately, some of these internship opportunities can also result in employment by the particular host organization or business in that sense, which leads to that private, private or public sector placement for us in that young person. Next slide, please. So here is more information on our summer program. So as mentioned with the hybrid component, we have teams that are both in person and virtual. So in addition to, to those components, we've also decided it would be great to accommodate those young people who may be um, in a predicament of summer school or credit recovery in a sense where they may not be available early in the morning or early days. So Monday through Friday, we have our AM cohorts, which will be active in the morning hours until the afternoon. And following those groups, we have the afternoon team, which is, uh, is working Monday through Thursday in the afternoon hours due to those particular circumstances. So although the morning teams have the possibility for more hours with the extra day, the Monday through Thursday opportunities also can uh, particularly involve a, a potential internship opportunity following the summer where the young person can kind of see that difference in hours. So in addition to the information provided here, you can see the list of, of teams such as the senior pair leaders, which as mentioned is a youth led group. They are supervised of course by YU staff, but these young people are really the voice of that team and they facilitate different workshops to really make a, a creative and safe space for young people. In addition, we have culinary arts, which is in partnership with Haley House's Take Back the Kitchen initiative. We have an entre entrepreneurship program and this is partnered with Just Teas. And these young people this summer would be selling merchandise as well as food at different locations, such as Franklin Park, City Hall, Nubian Square, and many others. And this is really to build those entrepreneurship and business skills, health and wellness. We have landscaping and agriculture, which as mentioned, really focuses on landscaping. This is a partnership with Save the Trees. 
we have intro to trades in which we are really trying to focus on hands-on experiences and trade experiences for young people as those industries are very popular and will continue to grow. We have an intro to cosmetology in which throughout the week, young people will be placed at different businesses, salons, and cosmetology sites to learn more about those particular crafts and, and career focuses, ranging from hair to nails to makeup and skincare. Um, we've really tried to provide a, a certainly uh, varied experience for them. In that sense, in addition, we have media arts. We have the Barista and Customer Service Group which is a partnership with Coffee Project New York. That is a virtual group where young people are learning the process of being a barista. We next have Music Appreciation and the Job Search Clinic. So all of these offerings as mentioned are exclusive to summer, but many of these do carry over to year round programming. And to apply, you can visit boston.gov slash wowu summer or scan the QR code below. And I can certainly leave my contact information in the chat as well for those that may have additional questions. But our goal is really to empower young people between the ages of 14 to 24 to succeed in the workforce, in the community, and in their lives. After applying here, you are directed to a referral application in which you either complete a self-referral or a parent, guardian, or uh, you know, relevant agency would complete this particular application with you. Our referral coordinator, Michelle Mahoney, would then make contact with that particular family or that individual to complete the onboarding. That is signing up through uh, the payroll options, identification, and just background info for that young person. Following the onboarding, they then receive a call from one of our cohort leaders or supervisors and receive the, uh, the information via email. So it's very important that everyone is checking their email throughout this process or being attentive to their phone and the, and the fact that we call as well. Um, but that's really the, the enrollment process. And, and uh, you know, there are additional supports that can be looped in. And as mentioned, again, I will leave my contact info as well. Um, next slide, please. Thank you. Thank you so much. And thank you to all of our youth jobs intermediaries for sharing more about the opportunities available uh, for youth across the city this summer. Uh, the sessions were really informative and we appreciate your time and sharing this as a resource uh, with everyone. Um, so next, I'm going to turn it over to my colleague, Naaman McDaniels, who will share a little bit more about SuccessLink, um, what we do and the onboarding process. All right, yeah, thank you, Alicia, and thank you to all of the partners who have just presented, um, sharing with our um, families some of the wonderful things that you have um, for them this summer. Um, so first, I'd like to start off with an overview of our program and just to let you know exactly who our SuccessLink youth are. So every year, the city of Boston funds thousands of youth summer jobs um, via the SuccessLink employment program. And so this summer, we actually have over 7,000 jobs available for students. Um, and our SuccessLink youth and leaders are city of Boston residents. Our younger youth are between the ages of 14 to 18, and our leaders are between the ages of 19 to 24. And also this year, um, we have a separation between uh, the different types of organizations that we're partnering with this summer. And they are separated into two different categories. Um, the first, as you may have noticed when completing the applications online, um, we have a category for what we call city agencies. City agencies are unique op employment opportunities within city government which means that these jobs will provide you with an inside perspective on what it is to be, what it's like to be a public servant, uh, provide you with some information on unique job opportunities with the local government, and also provide you with an in-depth look on professional development, uh, career pathways, and other necessary preparation um, that you may need in order to obtain a career in future, a future career in city government. Uh, some examples of our city and agency employers are BCYF or the Boston Centers for Youth and Families, 
uh, Boston Housing Authority, Boston Public Health Commission, uh, the Boston Police Department, also the Fire Department, Boston Parks and Rec, uh, the Office of Police Accountability and Transparency. And then there are also many jobs within City Hall and the different departments there. So who are the nonprofits um, that we partner with? So these are really um, jobs that are mission-driven um, opportunities um, within organizations that are rooted in positive and social impact um, that we hope to benefit communities and neighborhoods. And so we're hoping that these nonprofit jobs um, will provide youth with mission-driven opportunities in the community. It will provide them with pathways to administrative and policy activism careers. And then also provide them with opportunities to develop connections and create a positive impact in the community. And some examples of some of the nonprofit employers that we work with in summer 2023 are Digital Ready, uh, the Wang Center, Originations Culture and Art Center, Three Squares Main Street, the Boys and Girls Clubs, uh, Future Chefs, which is a pretty popular one, uh, Phillips Brooks House, uh, the Calculus Project, and also the Center for Teen Empowerment. And so, um, as I stated before, we do have a separation between our success link youth, which are the 14 to 18 year olds, and our success link leaders, which are 19 to 24 year olds. So our success link youth are able to earn up, are able to earn $15 an hour, and they can work 25 hours per week maximum, which means throughout the summer, they can work a total of 175 hours um, between the dates of June 26 and August 25th. Now our success link leaders, because they are a little bit older, we do pay them a little bit more. We pay them at a rate of $17 an hour, um, and which means that they are allowed to work up to 30 hours per week maximum. And they can work up to 240 hours um, during the duration of the summer between the dates of June 19th and August 25th. And so if a lot of you, some of you have gone to our website at youth.boston.gov, which you can see at the top of the screen there, um, and you've seen a table that looks very similar to this one that we are showing on the screen currently. Um, if you have not navigated to our website, please do so um, at your earliest convenience um, so that you can begin applying for one of the positions um, before they all fill up. Um, so if you are navigating to our website and you do see this table here on our page, um, one, of the most piece, one of the most helpful pieces of information that you may be find will be the organization's name, which will be on the left-hand side of the um, table. And keep in mind that this is an interactive table, which you can actually go scroll up and down and left to right um, directly on our website. And so if you were to scroll to the if you were to scroll to the right to see uh, some of the information that is unable to be shown on the screen, um, you'll be able to find the organization's um, job description. You'll be able to find an overview of that organization um, to see exactly what they are all about. And then you'll also be able to find some of the duties and responsibilities um, that you will be doing on a day-to-day -day, day -day -day basis if working for that organization. And then you'll also be able to find um, what an ideal candidate looks like um, for um, who they are actually looking to hire for that position. And so if you were to click on one of the organization names, um, you'll be able to see a pop-up box um, right on your screen and it will provide all the information that I just went over for you um, for that particular organization in one spot. And then you'll also be able to find the contact information for a primary person and a secondary person um, at that particular organization in case you'd like to reach out to them and let them know that you've completed an application um, and you'd like to let them know that you're interested. Next slide, please. And so um, just to give you some next steps on interviewing and uh, processing and how exactly all of that works. So just want to keep in mind that sites may contact your child in order to con conduct an interview. And so you, because of that, you want to make sure that the youth is constantly checking their email or their phone for any updates or communication. And now some of those communications may come from the, our office of Youth Employment Opportunity, or it may come directly from the partner organization that you're working with. So you just want to make sure you're on a lookout for that because there could, um, 
entail a lot of key information that you may need going forward. Parents, we also recommend that you that your child reaches out to the sites um, that they've applied to so that they can let the site know that they're interested um, and let them know directly why they're a good fit for working there. Um, we've uh, had some research done by our Northeastern team that works with us and they've let us know that a lot of students who actually make phone calls to the um, employers, they are the ones who usually are first selected um, because they've shown an interest and they showed an initiative, um, which lets the employer know that they are, are serious um, and that they are looking to do a good job for them this summer. Now, if a site does hire a child, um, they will reach out to the youth directly and or indicate um, to our office um, that the youth has been selected. And once they are selected, your child will receive an email communication in order to start the onboarding or the hiring process. Now for the city agency jobs, this email will contain a link um, and provide you with the forms that all students must fill out in order to be hired. It will also provide you with a document checklist um, of important forms that students must upload also in order to complete the hiring process. And then you also want to keep in mind that your child must complete the onboarding process as soon as possible, because if they do not show any progress um, that they've been completing their onboarding tasks, the site may uh, decide to, to give that position away to another youth um, who may complete the onboarding process a lot sooner. And also we just like for these students to complete the onboarding process as soon as possible so that they are ready to begin working by the first day of work, which is June 26. And then that way they can maximize their earning potential um, throughout the summer. Next slide, please. And so I just talked about some of the forms uh, that we will be requiring, especially for the city agencies. And so just to um, give you an idea of what those forms are, um, we will ask you to complete an online profile. We will ask you to sign off on the city of Boston completing an, a Corey and a Sorry check for all employees. Um, we do have to verify all social security numbers that are provided to us just to be sure that they are valid. We'll ask all students um, to complete tax forms, which will be a state tax form and a federal tax form. And parents, we certainly recommend that you help students out with that. All city employees do have to sign up for what is called OBRA. Uh, OBRA is a temporary employee retirement fund um, that all city employees have to pay into. Now, once the students are have completed the summer program, they are all eligible to receive those funds back. And if you'd um, like more information on that, please let us know and we can provide you with that. All students also have to uh, complete an I-9 federal employment verification form. And then also a SuccessLink YouthWorks data form. Uh, what are the documents that we're asking for from students? Um, we do ask for proof of citizenship. Um, or if you are not a, a permanent citizen, then we do ask for your um, alien residency status card. We do ask for a copy of your social security card, which is very important. As I said, we do verify the number to make sure that it is valid. Uh, we do require a Massachusetts work permit. Um, anybody that is working in the state of Massachusetts that are between the ages of 14 to 17 must have a work permit completed um, in order to um, legally work in the state. We are going to also collect a success link participant contract. We will also collect school enrollment. And we will also ask for proof of Boston residency. And just keep in mind that proof of school enrollment and proof of Boston residency can be one and the same. Yes, we can jump to the next slide. Thank you. We can jump to the, thank you. All right, and so um, just to give a little bit of detail about the um, forms and documents that I just went over. So what is the need for proof of citizenship? Um, so this document actually provides us um, with identity and employment authorization um, so that we can know that we are reporting um, the proper information um, to the federal government. Social security card is also a requirement that the city of Boston uses in order to verify the validity of the social security number for all employees. On the Massachusetts work permit, as I stated, the if you are between the ages of 14 to 17, 
um, you do require a work permit in order to legally work in the state. And YEO, our office does issue work permits. So please keep that in mind. Um, if you are unable to find a place to obtain a work permit, we do provide them um, here in our office. Um, what is the SuccessLink participant contract? Um, this is really just a document that establishes the youth's um, employees code of conduct, um, and then also grants our office with media release permission um, so that we can make sure that we are, we have your permission to sort of like take pictures um, and things like that. Um, we are asking for proof of school enrollment. Um, and this is for us to help complete your uh, federal I-9 form. And then, as I said, uh, proof of school enrollment, um, depending on what type of school you attend, um, if it's a Boston Public School, a Boston Metco School, or a Boston Charter School, um, school and proof of school enrollment and proof of Boston residency will be one and the same. Um, if you are attending a school other than the three types of schools that I just named, um, then we will ask for students to provide us with um, a utility bill um, from the residence where they reside, um, which obviously can be in a parent or guardian's name. And so um, we have a number of frequently asked questions that I know parents are wondering, and I will not go through the entire list of the frequently asked questions or the FAQs, but I will hit on a few of them that I think are very important. Um, and just keep in mind that this entire list of frequently asked questions, um, along with the slideshow, will be provided to um, the participants of this, um, of this presentation this evening. Um, and so one of the most uh, a prevalent questions I would say that we are asked is, if my child is offered multiple positions for SuccessLink, can they accept more than one? So as it turns out, youth employees and leaders may only accept one job position from SuccessLink um, for the current program period. Um, now, while we would like to encourage all students to maximize their earning potential, we would still like to be able to um, have options open for students who had not yet been selected um, so that they can also have um, a meaningful work experience for the summer. Um, what do I do if my child doesn't have any resident documents under their name? Um, so if you're um, a youth who uh, does not go to a Boston public school, a Metco school, or a Boston charter school, um, then the proof of um, the proof of Boston residency um, can be provided under the parent or guardian's name as long as it matches the home address on the student's school proof. So you just wanna make sure that you keep that in mind. So uh, we are not expecting students to um, have utility bills in their name. Uh, they can certainly be under the parent or guardian's name. Um, and the same thing for young adults, the 19 to 24 year olds, um, your uh, utility bills that you provide can be under your parent or guardian's name, as long as the address matches the home address on your primary proof of residency. And for the young adults, that is most likely going to be your uh, Massachusetts ID. And just to continue on with some of the questions that we are frequently asked, um, can my child be hired if they are missing one document but have uploaded all the others? So as it turns out, we do need all required documents to be uploaded um, in order for um, your child success link program I'm sorry, profile to be completed with the hiring process. Um, the reason for that is because we do have to make sure that we have all of the um, proper paperwork in line um, in case we are ever audited, um, or we want. To, we also want to make sure um, that we are verifying all of these students' information and the uh, validity of that information um, so that no um, consequences come back to the student. Um, from us hiring them without having the proper paperwork. I um, mean, we have seen that. So we just want to make sure that all the documents that are provided to us are the correct documents and are all provided to us um, to complete that profile. So if my child is done with the hiring process and if they finish filling out all the forms and online and uploaded their documents, um, what do they do now? So once your child has up completed all of the tasks, uh, listed on the, their success link profile, meaning that um, all of the tasks have a green check mark next to them um, and all of their documents up uploaded. 
they are done with the um, hiring process, but they are not yet officially hired. Um, if you can go to the next slide, I can get into exactly what how they would know um, if they are hired. Um, so once students have completed all of their paperwork, um, all um, of the city agencies um, that are working with YEO will be provided with what we call a participant roster. And that participant roster will have all of the names um, and contact information of the young people that have been um, hired for that particular site in that particular position. Um, for all of our students that are going to be hired through our nonprofit partners, um, you just want to make sure that um, you are reaching out to the point of contacts at those um, organizations um, to find out when will be your schedule and where you should report to work um, and who you should be reporting to when you report to work. Um, all of those are key pieces of information that you would want to find out before um, your first day of employment. Um, and if you are looking for the contact information uh, for the organization that you're working for for the summer, um, that contact information is provided on our website, right on the air table um, that we looked at a little bit earlier. Um, if you again, if you click on our organization's name, it will uh, provide you with a pop-up box um, that has the contact information um, for that particular organization. And so um, just to provide you with some tips on how you can assist your child in getting hired and completing the process. Um, so we do encourage you to sit down and complete the hiring process with them. Um, just so that you can ensure that they're filling out the forms completely and accurately. You want to make sure that your child uploads all of their documents and remind them that of the success link document checklist. You want to make sure that they are constantly checking their emails uh, for any updates um, or important information from employers or the YEO staff um, regarding their documents, uh, just in case they provide us something that we do not accept or something that is invalid. And then also you want to point, make sure that you point them in the right direction. Um, we are encouraging uh, parents to allow the youth um, to learn how to fill out the app in their forms on their own, upload the documents. Um, but we also are here in case anyone needs help. So please feel free to reach out to us or stop by our office um, if anybody needs help with any point of the hiring process. Um, and we will do our best to help get you through it. And so you have more frequently asked questions. Um, one of the, um, I guess, most popular questions as well is how can my child obtain a Massachusetts work permit? Um, so I have mentioned work permit a couple of times uh, during this presentation. Um, and if your child is receiving an onboarding email uh, from our office, um, because they are working for one of the city agency partners, um, in that onboarding email, um, there will be attached an attached PDF um, with a Massachusetts work permit application on it. And so you just want to make sure that you are completing the back page of that application where we will need the signature of the parent or guardian, um, as well as the youth signature. And if you are ages 14 or 15, um, we will also need a doctor's signature um, on that form as well. Um, but we do know that if you, we do know that sometimes uh, doctors are hard to get a hold of, um, and it may not be that easy to um, pop into the doctor's office and ask for a signature. Uh, we do accept a recent immunization record in place of that, um, as long as it's within the last year. Um, for folks who are 16 and 17 years old, you um, do not need the doctor's signature, but you still will need the parent and guardian signature. Um, if you'd like to complete the work permit online, um, we do have that available as well um, through a work permit request Google form, um, which you can fill out and then our team will go ahead and correspond with you uh, to make sure that you have all the correct information um, and then also provide you with the, um, with the work permit that you would need. Um, and so if that is, um, if that is something that you would like to do, then please let us know um, through that Google form. And again, this slideshow will be provided to you, all of the participants today. Um, so you'll be able to click on that link um, in order to access that form. Um, so if your student cannot get a letter uh, now that the schools are closed, um, instead of a letter, they can use their most recent report card 
um, or a screenshot of their Aspen page um, with their information um, that also shows their name and their home address, um, we do accept that. Um, but if a student is unable to, pro to provide us with any of the documents um, they need in order to get hired, um, unfortunately, we are unable to hire that youth until they've all, uh, provided us with all of the proper documentation. Um, so what if I don't have a computer or a scanner or a printer at home? Um, we do offer services here in our office in order to help out with that. Um, if you are unable to um, scan your child's documents at home, um, and so if you do not have a, um, a access to a phone or um, a computer or a scanner or a secure internet, uh, then please feel free to come into our office to get assistance um, with that. Um, and we can help you complete any tasks that you need to complete and then also um, upload the documents that you will be providing to us as well. Um, obviously we will make copies of those documents um, and provide you with the originals um, and upload the copies onto um, our our ISOMS website. We can go to the next one, please. Um, some payroll questions that we frequently get. Um, again, how does my child know when to start working? Um, they will receive an email or a call from the supervisor where they work. Um, if they do not hear from them, then certainly feel free to reach out to the primary contact um, for the employer or reach out to our office and then we will do our best to assist. Um, success link does not determine the child's work schedule. So we do often get the question of wh when is my child uh, supposed to report to work? Um, so our office, we partner with over a hundred different um, organizations and all of those organizations are different. Um, and so each of them may have their, may operate on their own schedule. Um, and so it would be best to contact that organization directly um, to figure out exactly when um, work will begin. And then how often will my child get paid? Um, so depending on the organization, um, they will be paid on either a weekly or a bi-weekly basis, uh, depending on the, on the pay schedule um, for that organization. Um, because as I just mentioned, um, with a number of different organizations we work with, they all operate in different ways. Um, and so the best way to get an answer for um, that particular question um, would be to speak to someone from that organization directly. Next slide, please. All right, and I have mentioned a number of times um, that you can always come to our office in order to get assistance on certain things like scanning and uploading documents, um, receiving a work permit, a job placement, or even a success link ID. Um, we are located at 1483 Tremont Street, right in the Mission Hill area, right across the street from the Roxbury Cross and T Station. Um, and we're here Monday through Friday, and we do offer onboarding support um, and services um, support from uh, 12 noon up until 5 p.m. So please feel free to come into our office um, and get any assistance um, that you may need. All right, cool. And so that concludes our success link overview. Um, and just as a reminder, if you have not yet um, placed a question in the Q&A box, but you do have a question that you would like to ask, please use the Q&A section at the bottom of your screen um, and enter your question there. And then we will, um, we will certainly get to your question to make sure that everyone's um, questions are answered. All right, so I'll go ahead and get started. Um, so are there any opportunities for non-Boston residents? So as stated um, at the beginning of the slideshow, um, all of our students, all of our SuccessLink youth participants are Boston, uh, City of Boston residents. Um, that is one of the requirements for our jobs program um, is that they are City of Boston residents and that they are between the appropriate ages, meaning 14 through 18 for the younger group and between 19 to 24 for our older group. Is there a link to all this information? Yes, there will be a link provided to all the attendees um, that have joined us today. How can we apply to a city agency job? Uh, the success link application link on the spreadsheet goes back, to, if, if, I can't, 
um, if we can hold off on removing the questions, I want to make sure that I'm answering them all. I apologize. Um, some of the questions I would like to ask out loud, just in case some of other folks may be wondering the same thing. I'm trying to find, all right, here we are. Uh, the success link application link on the spreadsheets goes back to the success link page, but not to any application. Yes, so we certainly understand that. And thank you for asking that question. Um, the success link, the success links application links on the spreadsheet go to our landing page where we uh, provide a lot of key information for the summer jobs program. Um, and then we also provide students with the seven steps in order to get hired. Um, but just below all of that key information, um, there is a search bar where you can type in a keyword from one of the job positions that you are looking to apply for. And if you type in that keyword right into that search bar and hit search, uh, that particular job um, will pop up for you. Um, and then um, you'll be able to find all the information on that job and then also see a link um, where to click, um, where to um, apply for that job. Also, if a student um, has worked with SuccessLink last year, um, do we still need to provide all the same forms? Um, so we do, if, if a student has worked for us last year, um, for example, one of the things that we will certainly need again would be um, a new work permit. Um, per work permits are good for one year. And so if a student was working last summer, it is likely that that work permit has expired it is likely that that work permit has expired um, and they would need a new one in order to, to be hired for this particular season. Um, uh, yes, so, um, but for certain things such as like a birth certificate or a social security card, um, if your student has worked for a success link last summer, um, then it may be still in our system if they are working through a city agency um, but if they are working for a nonprofit this summer, uh, but they worked for a city agency last summer, that nonprofit organization may not have the same um, uh, forms on file as we would. Um, and so they may ask for you to provide that information to them um, so that they have it for their records as well. So. Are kids with special needs um, accommodated? My son is on the autism spectrum, um, but is fully capable of successful employment. Um, yes, if you were to um, email us, and I can put our email in the chat here, uh, we can certainly point you in the right direction for those opportunities. Uh, we definitely wanna make sure that all of our bus and, um, students are included. Um, and so yes, we will have opportunities for that. Um, certainly email us at the success link at boston.gov with your question. And then we will make sure that um, your son or daughter are, um, is pointed in the right direction. And I, I see your follow up question is how do we disclose this to the prospective employer? Um, again, we have um, certain organizations um, that work specifically um, with students um, that may need special accommodations. And so we will make sure that you are, um, you know, pointed in the right direction, so to speak. So please email us um, with your question again, um, so that we have that um, in our um, email, and then we will make sure that your son or daughter um, is provided with a great opportunity this summer. I hope that answers your question. Um, do you guys have companies that will provide placements for students with special needs? Um, so yes, I believe I just answered that one from another um, participant today. So yes, um, if that is a similar question, um, please go ahead and feel free to email us at successlink at boston.gov with that same question. And we can make sure that your son or daughter um, is provided with you know, a great opportunity for the summer. Yes, absolutely. You want to make sure that everyone is included, of course. Um, my daughter is only in middle school and her school isn't listed on there. So what should I do? Um, when you say your daughter's school isn't listed, um, can you just please provide a little clarifying information?
I'm not sure who asked that question. I mean, it says anonymous, but I'll repeat it again, just so that I can ask that same person to um, provide us with some clarifying information. Uh, the question is, my daughter is only in middle school and her school isn't listed on there. So what can I do? I apologize, I'm just, I'm unclear on your question. I'm not sure if you mean that your daughter's school is not listed on our air table. Um, if that is what you're meaning, we do not have the schools listed on our air table where students attend school. We have all of our job opportunities on our air table. Um, so students should apply to those jobs um, that are on our air table. Um, schools will not be shown there. Hey, Naaman, that could be um, the actual application when we're having folks drop down the listing of schools that they attend. Got it. We have only included high schools, but there's a number of 14 year olds that are still in middle school and we do not have all the BPS middle schools included on that list. So that could be uh, what this individual, this question is referring to. Okay, that's a good point. Yeah, thank you for um, jumping in there, Shot. Um, so yes, if that does not answer your question, um, then please feel free to ask it again uh, so that we can uh, provide support. All right, um, next we have, my son will be turning 19 this summer. Um, will he still need to apply to the programs 14 to 18? Um, so if your student is going to, or if your son is going to turn 19 before the program begins, um, then he should look for one of our leader positions. Um, and we have a list of our leader positions um, that should be on our leader page by either today or tomorrow. Um, and then we, have all of our um, partner organizations and the number of leader slots that they have available. Um, so we would recommend um, reaching out to one of those organizations to let them know that you are interested in being a success link leader um, so that they can um, provide you with all the information that you would need um, in order to complete that process. Um, if your student is not going to turn 19 before the program, but will turn 19 during the program, then they should apply to um, our regular Success Link Youth Jobs Program. I hope that answers your question. Um, any other questions um, that have not yet been answered? All right. Well, we certainly want to make sure um, that we did answer everyone's question. So I hope that everyone that did have a question did receive an answer. Um, we do have a couple of more minutes. Um, so I will leave the floor open for any last minute questions that we receive. Um, yes, thank you all. Uh, thank you all for attending today, uh, both parents and students. Um, we hope that you all found a lot of information today that you found um, informative, and then also found um, some opportunities that you thought would be fun for you for this particular summer. And then also not just fun, but also a meaningful um, job experience for you as well. Um, what job focus um, do you have for 19 through 21 year olds? Um, so just as all of our um, jobs with all of our organizations are a little bit different from each other, the same applies to the different leader positions at these organizations as well. Um, so if anyone is looking to um, apply to an organization as a success link leader, um, the best place to receive that information um, would be from reaching out to the contacts at that particular organization um, and asking what are the requirements um, for that particular job, what are the duties and responsibilities for a leader at that particular job, um, and what does an ideal candidate look like for that particular job. Um, and they will be able to provide you with exactly the information that you're looking for. And then in turn, you'll be able to um, let, the, let them know that you're interested um, or you can um, listen to the information that they provide you and find out that it may not be a good fit for you and um, you can continue to um, find other opportunities. So again, all jobs are, um, that we have are 
a little bit different from each other as far as focus and um, responsibilities. Any other questions? Yes, thank you all for your time. Um, we appreciate you um, joining us today. Um, and if any of you that are still on this call would like to speak to any of the um, over 100 partner organizations that I mentioned to in person, um, we are going to be hosting um, some neighborhood job fairs um, in the coming weeks, the first being this Saturday in Jamaica Plain. Um, and we will have organizations there, um, representatives from organizations there um, with materials um, and they will be set up at tables um, to let them let you know exactly what type of opportunities they're providing for students. Um, and then you will be also be able to um, let them know why you would be a good fit. So my daughter has applied for a summer job but hasn't received a response yet. Um, so um, what I would recommend um, is looking through the contact information um, on our website uh, for the particular job for your student or your daughter. Um, you've reached out via email. Have you reached out to the primary and secondary contact via phone? Um, because that may be a good place to start as well. And then I would also ask which organization um, is it that you are looking to hear back from? And in addition to that, um, for those who are still with us, we certainly encourage you um, to, to apply to multiple jobs, um, up to 10, between 10 and 15 jobs. And the reason we say that is because it does give you more of a chance to be selected. Um, a lot of these jobs are competitive and may have very limited slots. Um, and so we just want to make sure that everyone has a fair shot and everyone has an opportunity um, for them this summer. And so if you, um, apply to more jobs, you certainly have a better shot at being selected. Um, although it may not be your first um, or even your second choice, um, we certainly have something available um, that would um, help out. Uh, get girls going. Um, so yeah, if you'd like to reach out to us separately, um, we can certainly look into that for you. Um, email us at successlink at boston.gov. And then we can um, look into that for you at Girls Get Going. Absolutely. All right, and we are coming up on six o'clock here. Um, so just wanna make sure that we are not leaving any are we going to be emailed about the times and dates of the job fairs? Uh, yes, I will ask that um, when the slideshow is um, provided to you that we also provide you with the flyer um, for the dates and the times of these job fairs. Thank you for asking that. If maybe Alicia can share that really quickly in the chat, that would be helpful. Yeah, also if you'd like to share that in the chat, please, if you have a link for that flyer, Alicia. Yes, happy to provide a little bit more information. I'm screen sharing right now, so I can't navigate to that, but we can make sure that the dates and times for the job fairs are shared and are available. Um, our first most upcoming job fair is taking place at the, the Boston Center for Youth and Families Curtis Hall location in Jamaica Plain this Saturday uh, from 11 to 2 o'clock p.m. So if you would like to join there, you're near, nearby, uh, please do join and come. Uh, we'll have our uh, kind of partners there sharing a bit more about the opportunities that are available uh, to you as um, or to, or to Boston youth. Um, so that'll be our first job there. Uh, we will make sure that um, everyone has the dates available in the times for our forthcoming job fairs after the Saturday uh, job fair. And that'll be shared via email. And each of these events are also listed on our webpage, youth.boston.gov. So if you navigate to our webpage and you scroll down to the event section, you will see a listing of all of the upcoming neighborhood job fairs as well. Perfect. Well, with that said, um, we certainly thank all of the parents and students that have joined us today um, to find out some information about these summer opportunities um, that are being offered um, in summer 2023. We also um, like to thank all of the partners um, who have joined us today um, to provide us with the information um, 
that students will need um, in order to figure out exactly what would be the best opportunity for them. Um, and so we certainly hope that everyone has a successful summer. And again, if you do have any questions or need any assistance with anything, uh, please reach out to our office and we will be we would do our best to assist you and get you whatever it is that you need. Thank you all. You all have a good night.